first of all, thanks to everybody to be here. Very excited to, to talk with you and to tell you something more about OVR. Basically, I will try to go quickly through what is OVR and uh, what also are our uh, next goals uh, in terms of development. OVR is what we call a platform for the spatial web. Let's try to imagine, to rethink our world, uh, overlaid by 1.6 trillions of digital lens that live inside the blockchain as an NFT. And now try to imagine a new augmented reality ecosystem that is based on this digital real estate. And finally, imagine that you can explore this world with a smartphone that you have in your pockets. Basically, this is what we are doing at OVR. So we are a platform to create AR and VR experiences that are geolocalized to specific locations. What uh, we offer as a platform, basically, is this reference system, which we divided the world in hexagons, a visualization tool, so an app that runs on iOS and Android to see these AR experiences, and the software to upload this content on, on the locations. And of course, also all of the hosting services that need to, to be there in order to make this world function. But, but coming back a little bit before uh, going back to the platform, uh, probably many of you already know this distinction, but sometimes I got asked uh, what is the real difference between virtual reality and augmented reality? Basically, very quickly, with virtual reality, you are in a totally virtual world. So you don't have any more uh, contact with the reality that is outside, uh, I mean, uh, where you live in. While with augmented reality, uh, the goal is to mix physical world where basically we live in with augmented reality, virtual reality assets. So basically it's the combination of the two, these two worlds. Uh, some, somebody likes to say like mixing atoms and bits because basically you bring uh, the information world, the VR uh, through AR in the physical world. So the interesting thing about these two technologies is that there are some means that enable these technologies. So the best way to experience VR, of course, is, is with, an, with an headset like the one that you see here from Oculus. While AR right now can be experienced with mobile phones that right now are powerful enough to use the camera to see the world around you and to uh, render the images over that. So the, the, the big difference in potential of, on these technologies is actually also testified by what are the devices and the diffusion that the devices that you can use to experience those. So with VR, we are around 80 million devices. Why, when we are talking about AR and talking about smartphones to enable AR, we're talking about 3.5 billion devices. So this is the reason why the potential is so big for AR. Of course, not only that, also the fact that we live in a physical world and it's very difficult to imagine that we will pass uh, all of our life uh, connected to an headset. But I mean, th this is one, uh, one of the key points and one of the reasons why all of our platform is engineered uh, to work on mobile phones. So we are a mobile first uh, venture, let's say. Many times also people ask what is the difference between the central land and OVR? Because both, I mean, uh, we work in the metaverse and we both have NFTs representing uh, uh, real estate. So the real difference, again, is that with um, the central land, uh, you have an NFT representing uh, a real estate that is uh, totally in a virtual world. While in our case, uh, we have NFTs that are actually mapped to the physical world. So we divided the world in these hexagons that we call OVR lands. And those hexagons have a dimension of 300 square meters and are actually mapped to actual geographic locations. Just one hexagon that, for example, is representing uh, the Taj Mahal or the Tour Eiffel. So it's really mapped to one-to-one -to, -one to, the, to the real world. So uh, we like to refer to these uh, NFTs uh, like spatial domains. So to give you a comparison and to give you an idea on how does it work, uh, basically, you have the, in the web, you have the web domain. And if you own one of these web domains, basically, you can decide what will be the content over, over that website. In our case, I mean, OVR lands are spatial domains. So once you own one of these spatial domains, you will decide what will be the content that people will visualize in that physical location. We've been raided. Just carry on. <laughs> okay, okay. M moving on to this comparison with web domains and also NFTs eh? and trying to make also a, a, a connection between that. So web domains actually were the first non-fungible digital assets out there, if you think about that. Uh, and actually, they generated incredible returns, like 
10,000x returns for early investors. Of course, we are in a different era and the things are quite different, but just to give you an idea of what happened, I mean, when people believed in this crazy internet thing uh, back in the days, no? So, and just to give you an idea of what is our vision on where we are now with non-fungible tokens, we believe that now we are in year 2000 for non-fungible tokens. Basically, if we divide uh, the NFT world in these categories, so collectible, metaverse, art, utility, sport, and games, we see that the 30% of value that is generating and exchanged in NFTs is uh, for what is called metaverse. So the central and sandbox, and I mean, all of the others that are working in this world take 30% of the value of NFTs. And basically, OVR can be seen in, in this category. Coming back to the AR, because our platform basically combines AR and NFTs to create the metaverse. So why AR now? Because also that's the right moment to be in the AR space. First of all, because we are at what we call a technological tipping point. So we have mobile phones that, that everybody owns and are powerful enough to deliver very high quality experience. And this was not possible like five years ago, for example. And also we have 5G that is coming. So we'll be able to download very fast, very high quality assets. The ecosystem is very fragmented. So there is no clear winner, uh, not, no clear winner platform in the AR world. If you're talking about, for example, the VR metaverse, of course, there is a clear big winner that is the central end. That is not, uh, we cannot say, uh, say the same about AR. And uh, we believe that right now in AR and blockchain, we are the most important platform. Coming back to the OVR lands, how does it work? How you buy that? So basically the base price for every land in the world is $10. And you can bid for it. If nobody bids after 24 hours, the, this OVR land is yours. But if somebody else bids, the minimum next bid is the double price. So the price goes up exponentially. So 10, 20, 40, 80, and so on. And this basically allow for very fast price discovery. So some of the lands, the more requested one, really went out for quite crazy prices. While the most of them, of course, as you can imagine, went out for $10. But again, as I said before, bringing the medium price to $15. Giving you some early traction uh, on what we achieved uh, in, the last, in the six months since our launch. So basically, we was able to sell 330,000 of this virtual lens at an average price of $15 or almost. We had uh, more than 150K downloads of the app, and we have uh, actually between 3,000 and 10,000 active users daily that actually use the app. And with the treasure hunt, that's a Pokemon Go style treasure hunt, so you can go around the world and collect our tokens, people physically went with their devices to uh, more than 300,000 places to collect our tokens. So, and that was uh, what I was mentioning before, especially in Asia, this uh, has been super hot, so hot that we had to, uh, I mean, uh, restrain it a little bit because, I mean, uh, uh, we was distributing, of course, too much tokens. So right now, uh, if you want to collect tokens, you need to pay to do that. But still, still people is doing that anyway. And that's it. I hope uh, I did not annoy you too much. If you have any question, I'm very happy to answer you. Okay.